This is Britain's most popular and successful car, the Mini. Over five million have been made. This is one of the latest models. And this is one of the very first Minis. It was made in 1959. As you can see, the design has hardly changed. Very few cars have lasted as long as the Mini. So, why is it so popular? I think because they're so well designed and so economical. They just, they last a long time. I can't think of any other cars that you see so many of them when they're so old. And they're very, very easy to drive around town and easy to park and just good cars to drive, really. The Mini is so special for me because I can maintain and service and repair them with small hand tools within my own workshop. They're a car that anybody can drive. Most people have driven one at some time and all of the controls are simple. And so therefore you don't have to relearn the car each time you get in it to drive. In the late 1950s, BMC, the British Motor Corporation, wanted to build a car that was different from other cars. They wanted it to be small, cheap and economical, like the bubble car. But the bubble car could only take two passengers. BMC wanted a family car big enough to carry four passengers. Nowadays, that doesn't sound like a difficult problem, but in 1957, it was. At that time, a typical small family car looked like this. It was quite long, about three and a half meters. It had large wheels and a large space for the engine. So there wasn't much room for the passengers. And it was expensive to make and it cost a lot to run. The Mini was designed by Alec Isigonis. This wasn't his first car. In 1948, he designed the Morris Minor, which was also very successful. He was a fast worker. He drew designs for the Mini on small pieces of paper, even on the back of envelopes. From the first idea to the first complete car took just two years, an incredible achievement. Izzy Gonis's problem was this. How to design a car which was smaller than most family cars, but which had more space inside. First of all, he decided that the Mini should be three meters long, half a meter shorter than most small cars. Next, the wheels were made much smaller, with independent suspension, and they were put right at the four corners of the car. Then the engine was turned sideways, and the gearbox was put underneath. More space was saved by having front wheel drive, and there was still room for four passengers. In 1959, this design was revolutionary. Today, nearly every small car is based on the design of the Mini. Like the Volkswagen Beetle in Germany, the Mini was designed as a people's car. It was cheap and economical, and in the early 1960s, many ordinary families in Britain bought one. Everybody was very surprised then when the Mini became a very fashionable car. Many famous people drove them. Film stars, pop stars, politicians, royalty. Even Enzo Ferrari, the famous Italian sports car designer, owned one. How many Minis have you got? Um, I've got two Minis, but only one of them goes. I think at the last count, 14. Do you repair them yourself? Well, I have tried, <laughs> but, um, but no, I get somebody to do it for me easily. What's the fastest you've ever driven a Mini? The fastest I've been in this particular one is about 125 miles an hour. What's the largest number of people you've ever got into a Mini? Oh, not very many, only about five or six. There were four of us actually in the front seat, and I think there were five in the back seat and one was sitting in the boot with the boot lid laying down. By the mid-1960s, the Mini was both a popular family car and a fashion accessory for the rich. But something even more surprising was happening. The Mini was becoming a very successful high-performance car. The unique design, especially the position of the wheels with their independent suspension, and the car's low centre of gravity meant that Minis were very fast, especially when going around corners. Minis took part in all the major European rallies from 1960. 
There were a lot of bigger, faster cars in these races, such as the Porsche 911 and the Citroen DS, but on narrow, winding roads, nothing could beat the Mini. These three Minis won the Monte Carlo Rally in 1964, 1965 and 1967. Is there anything you don't like about the Mini? I can honestly say no. They're not very good when it's damp. If it rains, they're a bit, a bit tricky to start. Is there any other car that you'd prefer to have? Only something like a Porsche, but realistically, not really. And would you swap your Mini for another car? Oh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> the Mini is not the most elegant car. It's not the fastest car or the most comfortable either. But it's got plenty of character. It's fun to drive, and although it's over 30 years old, it still looks good. And of course, it's easy to park.